So let's take you for a little walk down this area and explain a little bit more about how it came about. This is now called the Nook. It used to be called the Secret Garden and I felt that the name was a little bit inappropriate because in most people's minds the Secret Garden is a walled garden and as you walk through you're greeted by a lot of plants. So this area doesn't really meet meet your expectations. So after a long debate, I finally settled on the name The Nook. And that was after somebody actually here on YouTube suggested that that would, might be a good name. And I, I, so whoever that was, I thank you. And yes, I'm using it now as its name. And it's quite a nice area, the, this area. It's got a nice feel about it. As I say, I'm going to change part of it. We are going to have a walkway through here. By the end of this year, that will have certainly happened. But for now, it is what it is. And it's just got that nice feel as you look down at it. So, the little structure you see in front of you, that was made by a friend, and then I finished it off. It was actually just the framework. And I finished it off with the roof firstly, which is a corrugated tin, and it's quite nice. I like corrugated tin. It just gives it that, that old look instantly without it really trying. And then all that lat work, all that wooden lat work, is just pallets. And I attach them to this just to give it a nice look. And then I have, obviously I've, I've painted that a darker color. And then the door that you see there, that door, was being thrown away and I believe it was actually in a walled garden itself and it used to go through a, a doorway obviously and then into a garden and it was being thrown away and the only reason it was being thrown away was because the bottom of it had become rotten so I rescued it I didn't want it thrown away there's ridiculous to waste something as good as that so it was obviously about a foot and a half taller than it is now and i thought well it would make quite a, get a nice gateway for the nook and as you can see it does and we had a bit of fun putting that door on because i actually haven't admitted it but i had to change that three times the way i hung it wasn't happy with it and somebody suggested that it was hung the wrong way and yes you were right I got it wrong I do get things wrong and I got that wrong so I, I re-hung it and now it works perfect now the only criticism I'm gonna have over it at the moment is that it is slightly leaning as we look at it to the left that's gonna be rectified I've just simply got to straighten it up and put some sort of a support into hold it so as we open the door this is what we're confronted with this secret little area and I really do like this area. It's, it's got a really nice feel about it. And I designed it really in mind with, um, with having it as a secret place. So a secret place rather than a secret garden. So the nook really does fit that. Now at the time I was building it, this was all open all this section was just open well it was all open all the garden was just a, just a lawn wasn't it if you remember back if you look back on some of my videos you'll see that so i decided i needed some sort of a screening uh, to make it work a little bit better so i set about and did just that so i've made made it into a more secluded garden than what it was or would have been for a long time until the plants grew. Now that is Lanissera nitida and I think it's one called Bagginson's Gold and it was literally a couple of twigs when I first moved here. So we've been here three years and it was just literally three twigs and I thought it had potential but it would need time and work. So I'm having to clip it and keep clipping it until it gets to a height that I'm going to be happy with. 
and then obviously we've got this section here and you can still see through and at the moment it, it doesn't really matter to me that you can see through up there i'd rather you not be able to see through it but time is what is needed now up here or down here so we've put uh oh, let's just check this this isn't it's not doing too bad but it could be better so we've got this shrub here and it's it's an eliagnus and the only thing with this Eli, particular Eliagnus, I could have chose a better Eliagnus, to be quite honest. But it is an evergreen, so I thought it would be better. And I wanted something that would be more evergreen, something more in keeping with what was already down here. So the colours kind of match. So that Eliagnus has been put in there, and then over time it's going to fill this gap in, or this void. And actually, once that starts growing, I may have a little bit of a play about with that and create some sort of a view through it, which is always interesting to do. So if you imagine that section being completely covered by that shrub, which it will be eventually, um, by cutting some sort of view through it, it can add interest, make it look really nice. Now, I've got this bamboo out here as well, and this is a Fargesia and an Itida called Obelisk. And it's it's only small at the moment. It's only ever going to be a small bamboo. I'll put the size up on screen, but it's going to be a small and obelisk-shaped bamboo, as its name suggests. But again, it will add some sort of an interest and some sort of a block. So I don't want to wish my time away, but I'd, I really wish these things would grow a bit quicker. But the problem we've always had here, had here is that we've got this big tree and this big tree is what causes parts of the problem because what it's doing is it's sapping the life out of anything that's planted around it things are surviving as you can see but it does slow things down quite a lot but nevertheless things are, are doing well okay and okay around it but it does slow things like I've got another viburnum here and this viburnum's having a hard time settling in at the moment and again that viburnum is there to give me more of a, a blocking effect and it will do it'll get to about five between five and six feet that's viburnum tinus eve price that particular one it's quite a nice one and it's there to block your view again now where the wheelbarrow is at the back there you can see there's another viburnum let's get a bit closer to it and that viburnum is a ritidifilum, and he's a very, very big shrub and will make 15 foot quite easily over time. And the idea of this one is to actually disguise some of this section here. And over time, it will do just that. And then I shall have to do a bit of uh, selective pruning to it just to, just to keep it in shape. And what I'm hoping for is that eventually that will make its own sort of tunnel. So where it is at the moment, which is there, it will go up and over and I shall then kind of create a walkway through it. And it'll be really nice there. Well, hopefully over time it will. And again, it'll, it'll act as a kind of a blocking for this area. And eventually this area will, it, well, just by its very nature of having lots of shrubs around it, it will kind of disguise you from the noise because we're, believe it or not, just, just over that edge there is the main road. And from time to time, on all my videos, you, you can hear the traffic. And there you go. Traffic coming past all the time. So anything like this will help to act as a cushioning for the sound. I've got other things in here. I've got ferns, which is what I'd mainly like to keep in here. And the nice, these ones. This, which one's this? Oh, that's Triopteris Affinis the King, that particular one. And there's another one up there to the left. And then we have, how many of these? I've got two of these just looking around because I thought I'd put three in here. I obviously haven't. Then we've got this particular one, which is Dryopteris affinis robusta. So as its name suggests, it'll become quite a robust growing fern. It's just going to take time. A structure there, that is a what we call in the UK a copper and that would have been the other way up in a 
brick building and it would contain water and then there would have been a fire underneath it to heat it up and then in days gone by people would have washed the clothes in that but i've turned it into this little thing it's a little bit more interesting all i've done is simply drill the holes and put these structures in these are fern structures and these are in there just to pick up on the ferns that are already in here it's kind of a, a link to the ferns so that's really nice and i really do like that and that you can buy those on the internet i bought those on the internet i think i paid about 60 70 pound for three they're quite good they were silver when they came but they're now rusted off which is a nice look and then the little thing at the back there, the little mushroomy shape, I bought at some garden show. And I've put some more plants down the side here. Now we've got the, the hedge that you're looking at, it's just a hawthorn edge. And I've been letting that grow over the last three years and it's doing quite well now because it was very low and people could just look over here. But the problem with this edge is that somebody's allowed, somebody's allowed the ivy to grow and that section there that's ivy taking over completely but but ivy makes a lovely edge if you can if you can work with it and that's what i'm doing here working with it and that's an ivy edge there the, the edge itself's just died away and the ivy's doing doing the actual blocking now so i'm just simply clipping it to sort of suit and then i've kept this side here this is like a border it's a woodland border really and that is just, it's just for looks, isn't it? So we've got a viburnum here. This is a lovely, oh, it's going to be a lovely viburnum. I, I feared it, I feared it in the beginning because I did not think it was going to actually make it. And this particular one is called viburnum sinant momifolium. Now I'll put the exact size it's going to make up on screen. But I believe it's something like 10 to 12 foot, which is what I'm hoping for in this section. And then that'll add, when I'm sat in here, it'll add this little feature. It'll come like that, won't it? It'll just, just look like that. So that'll look great again. And then we've got other plants in there that take the conditions. So we've got the euphorbia there, and that's called whistleberry garnet. And I remember, if you, if you do follow me regularly, you'll have seen that I planted that within one of the sheep bale feeders thinking I could control it but uh, it's unfortunately it's really it acts like robby eye which is very invasive spreader anyway I say invasive we've stopped using that term we've 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 started using the term very successful spreader <laughs> which you know which it is is you know you can call it invasive if you want and I'm using that here because, and the simple reason I'm using it here is because I can control it in here. I can see where it is and when it gets to where I don't want it to be, I'll simply pull it out or spray it back to keep it in control. But it can grow wherever it wants up in this border. It's not going to cause any problems. And all it can do the other side is go into the grass and then it's easy. We just mow over it to stop it because there is a grass border. So I've lined it with these old tree trunks and these were taken down by someone and they were throwing them away and i thought i'll rescue those and i brought them up here and i had quite a lot at one point but over time i've, I've selected the best ones i think sometimes you just overdo things and just for the sake of it so i've picked the best ones and so we've got a lot less than we had at that point and they're just creating the border now this section here this has got this concrete lintel i don't really know what it is we keep meaning to dig this out see what we've got there but we don't know what it is but for now it's acting as a kind of a border anyway and i would have had to put something in there to to really define it and it would pay to have more of this kind of thing going on so i'll probably seek out in fact i don't need to seek out because i've got enough here to actually put into this section here can we demonstrate it? Yes, we can. So what we'll end up doing is we'll end up putting more chunky stuff in here and making it look like it's a wooden edge rather than that concrete edge, which will look really nice. So I've used these bits. These were just hanging around here. The bits of Yorkstone slabs that have shaled off. So they've split off from the main bit and I've just sat them there for now. They're not really right at the moment if i'd have had a lot of those they'd have been right we could have put them all the way down but that's all i've got so there's another fern here for the life of me i can't remember which on this is it's linarius i think or something like that I'm not 100 percent sure 
but it's doing all right, as is everything. And then we've got this little tree, and this really is a tree, but in the UK we'd really list this as a shrub, although it can be very suckering. And it's Aralia ilata, and some people call it the devil's walking stick. Not sure whether this is the particular variety they're talking about, but as you can see there, it's definitely spiky. So, but it's good here. It's going to be okay in here. And then I have this, what, what would we call that? A toadstool or a mushroom? I don't know, either, either. It don't really matter. That was a that was a gift on one of my birthdays from my girlfriend. She bought me that. That stands at four foot. Not cheap. But looks good here and it should last in here forever. Because it is very hard and robust. So that's looking nice at the moment. And we get a lovely view. I mean, I love coming in here. It's a lovely view. And then we go to this, and this is what I call the Anderson Shelter Arbor Seat. So I live in a village not too far from RAF Binbrook, where they used to fly planes out in the war, obviously, Lancasters, etc. And I thought it would be a nice nod to that to actually have an Anderson Shelter. Now, Anderson Shelters can still be picked up, the original ones, but they want way too much money for them. I'm, I'm not prepared to pay the stupid money that people are after. So what I did was I did it out of a pig ark. Now, these you can pick up relatively cheap. I actually did a deal on this particular one, and I ended up swapping something for it. And then the bits below it, they're just straight bits of corrugated tin. And believe it or not... There was a wall in a barn that was knocked down by accident by the owner. What he drove into the wall, the brick wall, and, and revealed these. These were behind it. So I rescued them and then simply attached them to it, as you can see there, with those nuts and bolts. The back of it is just hardboard and then painted. And then we've got these four seats that I keep saying I'm going to change, and at some point I'm sure I'll change it. But for now, I'm going to have to keep them as they are. I prefer wood. It would suit it better. But for now, we'll keep those because we can sit in there. And then at the back of that actual section there, and I can't show you from here, we've got like a framework of wood to support it, hence all the screw holes. So they're all screwed into the framework. And it's a really nice area to sit because nobody really knows you're here. And if I sit this side, so this is, as we're looking out to the right, there's absolutely no way anybody can see you. Now, at the moment, somebody's outside mowing the lawn. You can probably hear that. Um, but nobody knows I'm here. It's really nice. And then, it, But if I sat towards the left, this side, I can actually see up there to that top, through that gap... And you can maybe just make out the white fence right at the top there. Now, that's the entrance to the garden. And if anybody comes, I can actually spot them from here. But they don't know I'm here because they never look down this way. So it's a good little hideaway. And I like it as that. And I like it here because I can come and sit down here, bring me a cup of tea, sit down here, relax, and just enjoy my creation. Because at one point, this was just just a mess to be quite honest. It was uh, a bit of a bank to the left, and I've played about with it. I've leveled it. I've wanted to make it look more interesting, which I think I'm succeeding in doing. The only bit I'm not happy with, as I've said a minute ago, is the bit at the top, but we will rectify that. It will be soon sorted out. So we'll take a quick look from out here. And this is the view we get from out here. So that's how we see it. So that uh, Anderson Abba shelter seat actually looks interesting and it draws, draws the viewer in and makes them want to come through the door. So it looks really, really nice. And as I said, these sections here were really just temporary sections and may be taken down or I may just leave them alone because they are going to be covered in the end. This bamboo will do a good job of covering all that eventually. And then the viburnum will do a good job of covering virtually all that section that we're looking at at the moment. All of that. Then the other viburnum, once it gets its feet in properly, should be okay and it'll grow again. 
and then all the rest of the plant life should start maturing and creating a screen which would be nice i prefer much prefer that type of screen in this area than i would a fence and i would much prefer this type of screen instead of a large lap fence because large lap fences are boring and this looks a lot more interesting so there you go a little bit more about the nook that was supposed to be the secret garden but is now the nook i'll touch you on the next one ta-da